With less than a month left before Microsoft dispatches the Xbox 360 store for good, it's time I list some of the best titles still available to buy on the service at present. As come the shutdown, all the Xbox 360 only games will no longer be available to buy. This goes for all the extra download content for games as well, and many of the games featured in this video also have DLC. Likewise, this will also serve as a list of games to raise the Jolly Roger flag to as well after the shutdown occurs. As a developer of games myself, I would always advise however that you support developers and publishers while games are available to legally buy. Even if the idea of supporting Microsoft now is making a lot of people bolt, as it really is looking like they want shot of the Xbox console hardware as fast as possible. So don't be surprised if they end up bearing the Xbox 360, Xbox One and Xbox Series all at the same time. It seems Phil, Satya and Brad are already digging the holes for them and the entire Xbox brand it seems. Some digging into a few games industry sources have also suggested that the main reason for this shutdown is purely Microsoft want to move people onto the newer systems and just can't be bothered to run it anymore. So yes, bad, bad, bad. In fact, with their recent studio closures and many other poor decisions they've made recently, the company really is quite a villain these days. So get your booze in for them now. Boo, 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 boo. Hello everyone, my name is Random Gamer Riven and welcome to Randomized Gaming. As I bring you a rundown on some of the better XBLA games we will be losing in July. If you enjoyed this video as always hit the like button, consider subscribing, hit the bell, follow us on Twitch, Twitter and you can support us on Ko-fi if you want. Huge thank you to everyone who has watched and commentated on our previous videos on the Xbox 360 store. We've had some really great information from you all, some of which has been a real eye opener. If you're just here for the game's rundown, skip ahead in the chapters. But before I do that, I'm going to go over some of the points raised in the comments of our last videos, as some of these people really do need to be made aware of. First off, I had a couple of viewers confirm to me that card purchases are working again on the store in many regions after being disabled for a while, so that's good news. Some people are still having issues in mind and still can't add a card. But it is a per region thing now. Personally, I'm still sticking with gift cards to avoid running lots of transactions on my card. I will point out there is a transaction limit on many cards per day. I know mine had a limit of about 30. Do remember the Xbox 360 does not have a basket function and items have to be purchased individually. Also, I'm pleased to report redemption codes for games and DLCs still work at present. As was mentioned by a number of you, buying Xbox 360 games on the Xbox One or Series X store doesn't always mean they will turn up in your Xbox 360 download history, so be aware of that. It seems it is about 50-50 pending on the title. It skipped my mind when I did the previous video, but a year back EA gave away the Skate 3 download content for free via Game Pass. However, if you got it via this method you can't access it on Xbox 360 and it seems all Xbox 360 DLC given away on Game Pass is locked to the later consoles. As pointed out by Mexican Gomez 31 some of the paid for Gears of War 3 DLC on 360 is free to download on Xbox One and Series X, but again if you download it on One or Series X it won't show up on 360. A couple of people also mentioned that the price of the same DLC on Xbox 360 and Xbox One Series X can variate between platforms, so do watch out for that. While Mitch Loves Music 5663 pointed out that Deadfall Adventures DLC was cheaper on Xbox One, it wasn't added to his 360 history on purchase however. We Ourselves noted one of the DLCs for Tom Clancy's End War is free to download on 360 but is paid for on the Xbox One store. Oh and a couple of games like Omega 5 and The Cave got delisted on the Xbox 360 store but then reappeared on Xbox One store to buy again. The Cave is a bit of a strange one as you can only play it via Game Pass on Xbox One or Series. 
From the feedback, it seems just about all Xbox original games don't appear on 360 if you buy them on the newer console stores, so be aware of that when buying them. Viewer Snipe MD raised some very good points. The most important one was about the pin system, something we'd never used ourselves that much. The short answer is pins for delisted titles in the shop create junk data that can't be removed from your system, so make sure to remove all store pins you have before the store closes. Quite a few of you raised issues about the download history list. The first important point is before you access your history, make sure nothing is downloading in the background and that the system has fully loaded your profile. On my Xbox 360, it now takes between 10 to 15 minutes to do that online. You need to wait for your avatar and achievements to load and that you can access storage on the hard drive and view save files. Even then, I still give it a couple of minutes after that. Once in your history, you need to navigate slowly down it, pausing every so often, allowing it to catch an update. Else you may well find you get a crash and kicked out of the menu. Some users report their list crashes no matter what when navigating them, and the suggestion is some long delisted content might be causing the issue. My personal advice now is to only download games and DLC before the shutdown. I would avoid avatar content and don't go downloading trailers either. Search and watch gameplay videos online if you must see how a game plays. On an even more serious note, Braveheart8085 is another viewer who reported missing games from their download history. It does look like if you downloaded some games early in the life of the Xbox 360 in 2005 or 2006, you might want to check if they are still in your download history. Finally, following on from our coverage of Deblob 2, which refuses to download on the Xbox 360, we've had multiple reports and comments from you that digital versions of SpongeBob, Truth or Square and Saints Row, Gat Out of Hell won't download and have the same error. Same with Call of Duty 2, that's the one set in World War 2. Also, the now delisted XBLA Earthworm Jim HD doesn't download on Xbox 360 either. Finally, for such a major franchise, we had comments that you can't even buy Call of Duty Classic on XBLA at present. It just errors when you try to do so, which isn't good. Also, to add to the list of games with compatibility packs, Dead Rising 2 is one such game which is needed for players who don't own the DLC to play with those who do. DJ Hero did also have one, but that has since been delisted and you cannot obtain it anymore. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for your views and comments on our last video. While it's clear now Microsoft have no interest in supporting the Xbox 360 or Xbox hardware in general, we can at least support some of the developers. On some good news, following our last video, I did manage to get a refund for Rabbit's Invasion, the interactive TV show season pack, after spending two weeks emailing them. Somehow it managed to be raised to the Xbox Escalation team, who quickly gave me a refund. That said, the normal support staff still refused even after I raised the second ticket, and they were breaching UK law by refusing. Thanks to the Xbox Escalation team, but it's clear to me Microsoft's customer support needs a full overhaul. Finally, just a reminder, Battlefield 3, 4 and Hardline, the latter of which I forgot to mention in our previous video, are all having their online shutdown on November the 7th this year. So if you're planning on buying them, do so now. They will be fully delisted from all Xbox stores at the end of July. According to the website True Achievement, all three have offline story campaigns, but I'm not sure if you have to be signed in on an EA account to play them. As viewer Crisis War XX 3440 commented in our previous video on the topic, the server rental feature for Battlefield 3 is largely broken now in many regions. Certainly in the USA, they are very hit and miss. A few people have been able to rent out European servers, and we played on an EU rented one the other night, I would suggest you avoid paying for this feature as it is so problematic. I'd also like to say a personal thanks to the websites Delisted Games, Time Extension and Pure Xbox for covering some of our previous videos on their website in news stories. I've included links to all three in the description below and do check them all out. 
Right, now on with the games. More good news as reported on the Delisted Games website, Microsoft are going to do three waves of permanent price reductions. The first hit on May 14th, 2024, second followed on June 18th, and last will follow on July 16th. However, the July one is going to be cutting it very close to the shutdown. I would advise people try to avoid buying on the last day in case there are any problems with the service. It does mean that a few of the games shown in this video have been discounted already and more will likely follow. Connect Games So to start with, let's talk about Connect and the many games of this Xbox 360 peripheral. Now let's not beat around the bush, Connect is done and dusted. It ain't ever coming back and even Xbox 360 emulation of this hardware is going to be very tricky and the last thing on the list to emulate by fan projects and even then very difficult without using the hardware itself. I spoke to Sean who runs the Delisted Games website and this was one of his main suggestions to cover in this video. So if you ever plan to buy a Kinect in the future, make sure to buy the digital Kinect games you want and their respective DLCs now. Quite a few retail games have DLC and a couple of them also included download code content which needs to be redeemed before the shutdown if you have a new copy. It's fair to say Kinect was a bit of a dud, the controls just didn't work that well. It was great for parties and the simple games played fairly well on it but the more complex titles had you battling with the device as you tried to play them. Then there's the matter of the space needed to play Connect. If you're wondering why I haven't recorded any footage, it's that the room where I have the capture PC is too small for Connect to work in. It needed too large a space and it's the same issue with VR, just that you need an even bigger space for VR. America houses on a whole tend to be far larger than the rest of the world due to the country's size, something many parts of the world don't have the luxury of and it's something the designers needed to take on board as you are limiting your user base to a very small group. Which is a shame as games like Steel Battalion Heavy Armor, The Gunstringer, Crossboard Seven, known as Adrenaline Misfits in North America, Sonic Free Riders and Rise of Nightmares are all very good games if it wasn't for the controller. I actually obtained every achievement on From Software Steel Battalion Heavy Armor, getting a max rank on all the multiplayer missions in solo mode. It's just a shame this doesn't support the normal controller, as I lost track of how many times I had to replay missions in order to save crew members or improve my mission performance as the controller didn't do as I instructed it. Trust me, you need the patience of a saint to finish this one. It also had a couple of DLCs including extra mission and weapons, all of which you need if you plan to perfect the game. The DLC weapons really helped on a few missions as did the skins. The trouble with Steel Battalion Heavy Armor, the story, graphics and music are all excellent, it's just that your greatest enemy isn't the rival mechs you battle, but the Kinect controller itself. On the Kinect digital front I enjoyed Lead Me's, Freefall Racer, Wreck-It and Fruit Ninja Kinect. They're certainly all worth grabbing. To be honest, if you enjoy playing Kinect you really should get as many games as possible. I suspect I'll be grudgingly buying some of them once all the sales are confirmed as all these games are going to be dumped in the trash can of history very soon never to return. So if you ever wanted to archive them now is your last chance as at present even the Xbox 360 emulator Xenia doesn't support it and I suspect won't do for a very long time if ever. While the Xbox One did have Kinect it was dropped pretty quickly and I don't believe a single Xbox 360 Kinect game is supported under the back catalogue project. XBLA non back catalogue games Now we come to the heart of the video where I look at some of the best games and more interesting titles that aren't on back catalogue. Some of these were clearly made with the XNA which isn't supported on Xbox One. Some have heavy license uses or the developers behind them are no more and others just leave you scratching your head as to why they weren't added. We can only assume low sales and the publisher or developer just said no to it. A couple of ground rules, I won't be looking at any game that got a port to the Xbox One or Xbox Series X, so that means I won't be covering games like the awesome Castle Crashes which has been ported to every modern system going. This includes games like the little known Masquerade The Ball Balls of Doom which I recently downloaded the demo for on 360. It was quite a fun 3D beat em up that was a very late 360 XBLA release in 2016. 
as it got released on Xbox One. That will be all the mention it gets in this video, but it's a fun little game more people should know about. Secondly, it must be available to buy in stores right now, as I've seen a few YouTubers recommend games long delisted. All the games shown in this video are in the United Kingdom Xbox 360 store at present, but there might be a small chance they get delisted before the shutdown. But some of the games may be delisted already in other regions, as was the case with the 2023 delisting event. If you are aware of any US or Japanese only XBLA games not covered in this video, do leave a comment below. As much as I would like to talk about some of the many Xbox 360 games we've lost already, right now is not the time for that and everyone knows the only way to obtain delisted Xbox 360 games now is to set sail on a certain ship and sea, Avashji mateys, aha! Thirdly, the game must not be back catalogue supported as all the back catalogue games are set to remain available for sale for now on the Xbox One and Xbox Series store after the 360 store closes. At least that's what Microsoft say. Some of these games are available on other systems but when the 360 store closes this will be your last chance to buy many of them on Xbox and in many cases on any system at all. There are a few games like Fez and Dust and Elysian Tale which are widely available on other systems but not on any other Xbox format which is an odd one and I will cover them briefly later. Right so in no particular order here goes with just some of the many XBLA games worth looking at. What I'll do is a quick chat on each game and then show some extended gameplay for about a minute. Fusion Genesis the one game I do want to give more respect to is the excellent, if a little buggy, Fusion Genesis, which is an open world, top down space shooter. It's a souped up version of the old arcade game Asteroids crossed with a game like Freelancer or more recently No Man's Skies. If you've ever played the old Dreamcast game Armada, then it's a better version of that, with you working for various fractions taking on jobs as you explore the galaxy. It really is very good. One of the sad facts about this game is that a patch was made to address many of the bugs including the online connection issues, however Microsoft decided not to publish the patch despite being the game's publisher. Oh dear. Sadly it looks like the developer have long since disappeared so there is little chance of a port to any other system and this will likely remain an Xbox 360 exclusive forever. If you want a sci-fi space adventure that has you shooting, mining, upgrading and trading your way to victory to some excellent music, this is a must. This footage comes from a longer video I did showing the start of the game and it, you can also download the trial to see what you think. I also list a workaround for the online issue in that video's description. Schnitznoid this one is a rather original take on the puzzle genre. Designed as a co-op game, the aim is to connect with enemies of the matching colour with one of two ships to destroy them. You have to connect the correct colour while avoiding the other. You can play with a friend or the CPU, AI, and if you're really brave there's a mode where you can control both ships at the same time, which is a real mind workout. It's a clever puzzle game worth playing. I suspect it was made using the XNA which would explain why it sadly isn't available to buy on the newer systems. Exit and Exit 2 Taito's Puzzle Rescue series is really very solid. You play Mr Escape, a professional escape artist who has to rescue people from various situations from burning buildings to flooding malls. Each stage has its own theme and the aim is to rescue all the trapped people. The series uses a colourful comic book shell shaded visuals that still hold up perfectly today. It takes a little time to get used to the game as the first one has quite a long tutorial chapter and the sequel really is more of the same with a few minor graphics updates. Both games feature DLC so be sure to get them while you can. Exit 1 and 2 got PlayStation Portable releases and the Xbox 360 version is a HD console port of this version. Exit DS was also released but that's a slightly different game. The Xbox 360 version is the only main console HD release other than an obscure Japan only port of the first game to PC, so if you want to play both games in HD on console, these soon to be delisted 360 versions are the only way, so don't delay. Death Tank Fans of the Sega Saturn might remember this one. The original version of Death Tank was included on the North American and Japanese versions of Power Slave while its sequel was included on the Saturn version of Duke Nukem 3D and the game was created by Ezra Dezibash. 
Skip forward a decade and a third game got released on Xbox 360. While the original games were multiplayer only, this one has some nice single player content, both an arcade mode which sees how long you can last for and a tournament mode against CPU tanks. It's just as crazy and fun as the earlier games with you trying to take out as many enemy tanks before you. You can also unlock power-ups and I must admit the targeting computer power-up really does make winning rounds very easy. It did need a little more content and it's a bit disappointing the second game on Saturn had 7 player support for complete carnage whereas this one only supports 4 players. This is another game exclusive to the Xbox 360 and as the developer have long since gone it seems a re-release is very unlikely. Jill. The full title of this one is Gel Set and Match, which is a block pushing puzzle game with customizable aardvarks as the player characters. Featuring a selection of gameplay modes to pick, the big disappointment however is the game doesn't feature AI bots so the multiplayer battles mode needs a second player to use, but it does support up to 4 players in total. There is also online play but you are going to need boosting sessions as the online for most Xbox 360 games is well and truly dead these days. The single player has two modes, puzzle mode which has you going through over 100 puzzles, while the action mode is a quick fire puzzle section that has you trying to move blocks out of the way of a giant truck against a timer. Battle mode has a number of mini games like those seen in Hudson Soft's Bomb Man series but requires a second player. Xbox 360 exclusive and another one where the developer doesn't look to be around anymore. Arcadian Warriors Diablo clones on the Xbox 360 were fairly rare in the early days of the system and Arcadian Warriors was one such game that did answer that call. It has to be said, the game's cover art and screenshots of the XBLA store did a poor job of selling it. As Diablo Cones and Dungeon Hack and Slash games go, it doesn't do anything original but everything it does do is solid enough and it supports 2 player co-op so you don't need to brave the dungeons alone. As the cover would suggest, the player character can briefly turn into animals for a special attack. Graphic wise there is nothing here that wouldn't trouble the PlayStation 2 but it does run at 60 frames a second, boss battles, level ups, better equipment and plenty of gold. Everything you'd expect in this type of live action RPG is here. I quite enjoyed what I played on this one, so one genre fan should look at. Puzzle Arcade this might come as a surprise to some people, but Puzzle Arcade is quite possibly the best digital jigsaw puzzle game I have played to date. Now, this is not a game that is going to be everyone's cup of tea, so to speak. Some people will no doubt go crazy at the idea of playing a digital jigsaw game. However, it is nice and relaxing to play, and there are lots of game modes and options available. It's the type of game you play when you don't want to blow stuff up, and it works really well. You can set the size and difficulty of the puzzles, even the shape type depending on how easy or tricky you want it to be. Lara Croft Tomb Raider fans might be interested to know she shows up in one of the puzzles as this footage shows. Can't remember if this puzzle was a DLC or not. The game was recently discounted and you can buy the game and DLC for £2.30 here in the UK. This game is an Xbox 360 exclusive and I don't see it ever getting reissued. The Dishwasher Dead Samurai and The Dishwasher Vampire Smile. Scar Studios' rather bloodthirsty tale of a dishwasher samurai who gets murdered only to come back to life on a revenge rampage is a fun if somewhat bloody game. Scar Studio have a very distinctive 2D art style that really makes their game stand out. It has a rough around the edges hand drawn look that not everyone will like but gives it a unique style. The Dishwasher Dead Samurai is a fast paced hack and slash that will have you cutting your way through enemies piece by piece. It's a mix of platformer and scrolling beat em up in a game where you really do paint the town red. The first game remains exclusive to Xbox 360 and I can only hope Scar Studios port it to PC at some point like they did with their first indie title 
I made a game with zombies in it. The second game is more of the same with better graphics. It does however have a Steam PC version, but the 360 release is the only console port. If you like the studio's games, do check out their newer titles on PC and console as well. Assault Heroes An early Xbox 360 vehicle twin stick shooter, Assault Heroes still holds up well as you shoot your way through various enemies and bosses. This one has you both in and out of vehicles and supports two player. While it isn't the best title in the genre, and it's certainly very good for an early 360 game, this also remains the only version of the game still available to purchase with both the PlayStation 3 and PC versions being delisted years back. There was a retail PC version, but getting older PC games to run on newer versions of Windows can be a nightmare. Lucidity Lucidity is a rather clever and visual looking puzzle game from Lutis Arts that seems to draw from puzzle games like The Incredible Machine and Bill's Tomato Game, mixed in with a bit of Lemmings. The aim is to guide Sophia through her dream world and collect fireflies as she travels. Your aim is to place blocks and items for Sophia to use to move around the level both to collect fireflies and to make sure she comes to no harm. It's a fast moving game where you have to be quick to place items, else you will find yourself back at the start of a level. This 360 version is the only console port, but it's still available to buy on Steam for PC. Call of Duty Classic Now this is an interesting one. The original Call of Duty got a console port to both Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. However, it is the sole game in the series not to get back compatibility support for some unexplained reason. It's a straightforward port of the PC version and plays very well. Sadly, it didn't include the United Offensive Expansion Pack, which had some of the best missions in the game, and its admission was a real case of dropping the ball by Activision. As it stands, the original game is still a real classic and far better than the modern series entries. There is one downside, I've had a number of reports that this can't be purchased on the store at present, so if Microsoft doesn't fix it, this might in effect already be delisted. It is also available on PlayStation 3 and PC, but you do have to use workarounds on the PC to get the original game and expansion running on modern operating systems. Alright, the mortars are taking a break. Johnson, go have a look. Right, Captain. I got him. Damn. Puzzle Bubble Live. This special Xbox 360 addition to the Puzzle Bubble series makes use of the Xbox avatar system and I suspect it's an XNA game, which explains why it won't be ported to the newer systems. There are so many Puzzle Bubble games I suspect this one won't be returning as it was a bit of a rerun of the tired and tested format at this point. Still, it's the same great gameplay as all the other games in the series and features all the same modes. So you have the classic alphabet course route, verse opponent and an endless mode which require you surviving for an hour for one of the achievements. It is an Xbox 360 exclusive release, so pick it up while you can. Burnout Crash This arcade minigame in the Burnout series is all about car crashes and not much else in this top-down view game. 
I'd call it a crash em up as there is no racing and only a small amount of driving. Fun in short bursts, it does get repetitive very quickly as the aim of the game is to crash as many cars as you can at a junction while scoring points and completing bonus objectives. The stage ends when you let too many cars escape or if you crash enough cars for a stage ending event that destroys everything. It has a very good use of music samples but that's also the reason I suspect this game is not on modern formats and why I can't have the game's real sound in this video. It includes songs such as Crash from the Primitives for the menu and plays samples from Gloria Estevan's Dr. Beat whenever you summon the ambulance. Play Spandau Ballet's Gold when you crash into the gold car hidden on each stage and the list goes on. Ice Ice Baby from Vanilla Ice and Salt and Pepper's Poop Shit are just some of the licensed songs to feature in this one so yes we can blame the music rights on this one. It's also available on PlayStation 3 but I suspect even that version may be delisted at some point. Section 8 Prejudice this is one of a couple of games where the Xbox 360 version is the only one still left standing to buy. Both the PlayStation 3 and PC versions have been delisted some time ago and the PC version has major issues now as from the sound of it first time users had to connect to the now closed online servers for some security checks for the DLC. Now I did show some gameplay the other day in a video of this well made first person arena shooter. It does feature AI bot support in all modes as all the footage you are seeing was recorded offline. The drop deployment is quite an interesting way to enter the fight and the game has some tower defense elements with you being able to call in vehicles, turrets and supplies to aid you in battle. If you want to see more gameplay watch our other video. Geon. How would I describe Geon? Well that's a good question. It's a bit like a verse version of Pac-Man where you have to be the first cube to collect all the pills before your opponent. There are various items to help and hinder you and you have to fill up level meters before dropping the pills in your rival goals. Be the first to do this five times and you win. It's a fun little title that isn't that deep but certainly worth a play. Also released on PlayStation 3 much later and that version might have had more content from some reports I saw. There was also a Wii retail version called Geon Cube but that seems to be a North America only release. Minesweeper Flags This is another Xbox 360 exclusive game and well it's Minesweeper, that puzzle game we all know and love. Do I need to say any more? Some fairly standard 3D graphics, it's the only release of the classic puzzle game on the system and it does its job well. There is plenty of single player content with a world map of puzzles to battle, you can also do random puzzles and set the size. It even has the classic 2D mode if you want a more retro feel. You'll know yourself if you enjoy Minesweeper or not, but if you want a classic puzzle game you can't go wrong with this one. Shoplifter HD This is a really great modern take on the classic 80s helicopter game. I really enjoyed this one as you battle to rescue people from war zones and zombie invasions in the case of the DLC. There are a number of helicopters to choose from and unlock and there is plenty of missions and settings for each stage. Each stage has bone objectives for extra score as you fly around shooting down enemies balancing your fuel while trying to rescue as many as you can. It gets quite tough in places but is an excellent title. Released also on PC and PlayStation 3, the PC version has long since been delisted.
Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus. The most recent of the 2D Guilty Gear games has yet to be ported to Xbox One or Series, despite it now being on Nintendo Switch. If you're a fighting fan, this is a must pick up as it's the best of the Guilty Gear games on Xbox 360. Just make sure to download the free DLC in the store that upgrades the game to the later revision once you buy it. Arc System Works have been making verse fighters for years now and Guilty Gear XX is packed full of content and modes and features over 20 playable characters to fight it out as. There's also a PC version alongside Switch if you would rather play those versions. Mortal Kombat Arcade Collection Keeping with the fighting theme, this is an interesting one. The original 90s Mortal Kombat Arcade games aren't going anywhere thanks to emulators like MAME. However, aside from some of the old Midway collections from the PlayStation 2 era and the delisted digital single release of MK2 and 3, the only way to officially play these games at present on console is on Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. The collection was delisted on PC and while there has been a number of attempts to remake these early arcade games, including one quite recently, they've all been cancelled. Which, to be honest, is pure madness as a retro collection of the original five arcade games would sell like hotcakes. Warner Brothers have made some very poor business decisions it seems. While this collection isn't perfect, it doesn't feature the basic version of Mortal Kombat 3, so you can't play as the overpowered original Cabal before he got nerfed in Ultimate MK3, and Mortal Kombat 4 is also missing, likely due to the fact emulation of it at the time was very poor. These days the emulation on 4 is far, far better. So a modern collection of all the arcade games would be awesome. It's not a perfect collection, but the only way to play them on console at present. Oh, and yes, Mortal Kombat 1, the original arcade game, was on the Antstream service on Xbox, but it got pulled. Renegade Ops A fantastic vehicle game that reminds me somewhat of the game Desert Strike and its sequels. Why it's not on back catalogue is a bit of a mystery, I can only assume Avalanche Studios and Sega either don't want to work together again or the game sold badly, which is a real shame as this is a first class twin stick shooter that needs more people to play it. I actually have a connection with this one as I worked on the mini game Sega did for PlayStation Home to advertise Renegade Ops. It was a little 2D shooter version with a couple of stages. The main game really feels like quite a high budget title as you have multiple characters to choose from with different vehicles to upgrade. The 3D graphics are excellent and run at a smooth 60 frames a second and each mission has you racing and shooting against the clock to complete both main and sub objectives. Cutscenes have a comic book style and the stories looks like it's ripped straight from an 80s action movie. There's a mix of driving and flying sections with the first boss being a massive ship you have to take on in a helicopter. Sadly this one released late in the generation and it did get badly overlooked, partly due to the fact there was a lot of twin stick shooters by this point. It also got released on PlayStation 3 and PC but it's not had a reissue since which is a real shame. Grab it now and it's DLC while it's still on the service. Hell yeah, Wrath of the Dead Rabbit. A colourful and bonkers platform game come shooter from now closed French studio Arcado. Their 2D games were all first class and this was one of the last games the studio did. The plot is totally crazy. You play the dead rabbit, the prince of the underworld, who needs to eliminate the 100 members of the underworld who saw him on social media with his rubber ducky in the bar. Yes, the plot is bonkers. The visuals are excellent and the gameplay is wacky and fun as you drive around in your giant metal wheel taking out enemies and crossing the 100 off your list one by one. There are extras and upgrades to collect as you navigate the world. The game has some really original ideas and I wish it had got a sequel. It was another late game on the system arriving in 2012 
as the game was published by Sega, there are lots of nods to many of Sega's games, and a DLC pack that allows you to customise the prints to wear gear from Sega's titles as well. The Virtual Missions DLC adds in some tough trials as well. It's a game more people should play. There are also PC and PlayStation 3 ports, but as Arcaido Studio aren't around anymore, a re-release seems unlikely. Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate Originally released on Nintendo 3DS and PlayStation Vita in 2013, a year later in 2014 a HD port of Blackgate was released on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC. While it may not be as deep as the main game in the series or as good, it's a solid 2.5D open world platformer and does what you expect. Once again you are Batman out to save the world, this time around you have to go up against the Joker, Penguin and Black Mask. And the game has multiple routes for it, so you will need to play through it at least three times to unlock everything it has to offer. Batman fans will no doubt enjoy it, hence why it gets a mention. There are however better games in the genre and better Batman games on Xbox 360. Capsized This one is a 2D platformer crossed with a twin stick shooter that sees your little astronaut having to escape an alien world. The game is split over a number of stages and remind me a little of an old home computer game released on formats such as the BBC Micro and Commodore Amiga called Exile, which is long overdue a remake. The game took quite a bit of flack on release owing to it having two broken achievements that could never be obtained in game. However, it features some excellent 2D visuals, solid shooting combat and quite a bit of puzzle solving with you having to move obstacles that get in your way as you navigate maze-like stages. It was also released on PC, but this is the only console port to date. Death Spank There were three games in the Death Spank series to date, the third one has been delisted for some time now on 360, and only the second is supported on the newer Xbox consoles. This comic tongue-in-cheek take on the hack and slash format oozes quality. It's a highly polished game that no doubt borrows from Diablo, but with a much more fun and colourful take on the genre. There's some fun and witty dialogue here, some excellent gameplay and plenty of quests. Also released on PC, Mac, PlayStation 3. Sadly there hasn't been a fourth game in the series and the third game seems to have only been delisted on Xbox 360. Come the shutdown the Xbox version of the first game will be no more. Bionic Commando Rearmed A number of Capcom's digital XBLA games got released on a retail Xbox 360 disc known as the Capcom Digital Collection. While it included the second Bionic Commando game, it was missing the first. This was a remake of the original NES game, which was a very different game to the original arcade title. I'd have to question if this remake is actually better than the NES game, as some elements like the controls don't take on board the improvements seen in the excellent Game Boy follow-up to the NES one. The game is very rigid with how it plays, and many will not like it. The top-down sections are also a bit slow. If you like your games old school, then give this one a try. It was also released on PlayStation 3 and PC, but with Grin, the developer now long gone, any reissue is doubtful. The second digital game is Xbox One supported. However, the 2009 All Singing or Dancing 3D retail game isn't either. That was okay at best and had a bonkers plot about the main character's wife being his bionic arm. No, I'm not joking about that. That was the plot and Super Joe, the hero of Commando, was the villain. Yeah, the story was just bad for that one. The Blue Coats North vs South Remake time again. This one is of the iconic home computer game first released in 1989 on Amiga and Atari ST before being ported to many more systems. 
As a fan of the original game, I was glad to see it get a reissue and this 2012 remake is far closer to the original version than the 2020 remake. However, while the overworld and field battles have largely remained intact, both the fort attacks and the train robberies have been changed for the worse. Still, the game remains a comedy take on the North American Civil War, with you moving troops around to battle the forces of your opponent, capture forts and steal loot from trains as you try to capture and hold territory. There is some censorship in this one from the original game, but it's an interesting title worth a look if you want something a bit different. Also on PC and PlayStation 3, it stands as one of the last released XBLA games on the service which hasn't been delisted already, as the 360 port released in 2016 on the service. Final Exam Interestingly, this is in fact the third and final game to date of the Obscura series, with the game at one point known as Obscura Final Exam. Unlike the previous two games, this has a more comedic horror take on the series and draws gameplay more from the scrolling beat-em-up genre and has the players exploring huge open world levels to work together to escape each stage. The previous Obscura games played more like Alone in the Dark and Resident Evil with a more realistic horror look. The game has you trying to clear a number of objectives as you and up to three other players try to escape each stage. It's a fun little game with each of the characters having different pros and cons, one that is certainly better in multiplayer than single player. It's available on PC and PlayStation 3 but hasn't had a release since then. With Mighty Rocket Studio now closed, this seems unlikely. Meto's Wars The third instalment of Q Entertainment's arcade puzzle game that has the player trying to match blocks to rocket them off screen. Certainly a different twist on the format of these type of games, concept designed by Masahiro Sakurai, while Tatsuya Mizuguchi did the music on the first game. Sadly, Masahiro Sarukai didn't work on this one and it loses a bit of the magic the Nintendo DS games have. This one is more about verse matches with you taking on other players or the AI. There's a couple of offline modes and online matches too. My biggest complaint is the colour scheme is rather drab and makes the game look somewhat dull. It's an Xbox 360 exclusive and with the rights to the series recently sold to Mobcast who work with Tetsuya Mizuguchi's new company, it's unclear if the old game will be reissued or if we will just see new games in the series. Thunderwolves. There's a lot to like in this over-the-top helicopter action game, which again looks like it's styled after 80s films. It's a mixture of Electronic Arts Strike series crossed with fast-paced arcade shooters like Thunderbay. Listen in as the main characters throw one-liners at each other all the time as you shoot down everything in sight. There's a mixture of third-person flying sections and on-rail gunner scenes. I played this through in two player and it is a surprisingly good game from now closed developer Most Wanted Entertainment. It was also released on PC and PlayStation 3 but any reissue is very unlikely so grab this action packed helicopter game before it's gone on Xbox 360. It may not be the longest game on the system but it's fun while it lasts. Naughty Bear Panic in Paradise Where to start with this one? Naughty Bear might just be one of the most violentest games on the system alongside Condemned 2. Unlike games like Gears of War, which have a bit of a comic take on the violence and gore, the original Naughty Bear and its sequel are games about brutal, cold-blooded teddy bear revenge. You play the teddy bear Naughty Bear, who, for want of a better word, goes around torturing, maiming and murdering other teddy bears. He can even scare them so much they decide to end it all. It's dark stuff. When the original has scenes of you slamming a car door in a teddy bear's face or throwing them into a burning campfire, you know this game ain't for kids. Quite how it got a Peggy 12 over here and a teen rating in the USA is anyone's guess. All this does is swap blood for fluff and really does give the Manhunt games a run for their money. The second game sees the teddy bears going on holiday and Naughty Bear going after them. 
it's just more of the same, with the first level allowing you to shove a teddy bear face first into a lawn mower, freeze them in the fridge, or smash them around the head with a phone before shoving it down their throat. Not for the faint of heart, I will admit. Both these games should have had an 18 Peggy rating as they are a very dark and twisted take on the old song the teddy bears have their picnic. The first game did get a retail release, but the digital version and its DLC got delisted some years back. There is a gold edition in the USA with the DLC, but that never got a PAL release. I grabbed the PlayStation 3 version of that, but just as a word of warning, that release has unobtainable achievements as they broke the ones for the DLC. Whereas the digital Naughty Bear Panic in Paradise has costume DLC that lets you dress up as various horror film characters is still up to buy. There is an element of horror to the game, which might explain why the developers would go on to do the highly successful Dead by Daylight, which also added a Naughty Bear skin for the Trapper character. It's just a shame I found that game rather dull and boring, with little content and lacking in game modes when I streamed it a few years back. In fact, thinking about it, it was kind of a cutback Naughty Bear. Tron Disney seemed to have forgotten about this reissue of the original Tron arcade game. While Discs of Tron, the follow-up arcade game, did get Xbox One support, this didn't. The original Tron game has players having to clear each round by completing four different mini-games based on the film. Clear all four and you have to start over again with the game slowly getting harder and harder. One has you driving a tank from the film, another has you racing the famous light cycles, while two other games are on foot and have you shooting through enemies to reach a goal area. Hugely impressive game for 1982, but I feel the gameplay is a little dated these days. Doesn't help the controls are a bit clunky on joypad as the original arcade used a rotationary dial and arcade stick which aren't easy to reproduce on a normal controller. Still, with it being a licensed game and no sign of a new Tron film in sight, I can't see this getting reissued and this is the only home port of the arcade game to date. Also, just a reminder, in order to buy this one, you must use the search function to find it, as it's missing from the A to Z listings. Charlie Murder Another title from Scar Studio, which features a plot not that much different from Dishwasher, starting with Charlie and his rock band fighting their way out of hell. This is another scrolling beat-em-up with Scar Studio's distinctive art style, as up to four players battle to defeat a former bandmate who decided to make a deal with a demon after leaving Charlie's band. Of all Scar's games on Xbox, I think this is my favourite, as it mixes in elements like equipment and shops seen in games like River City Ransom. It's also surprisingly long for a genre that normally has games around two hours in length at best. Genre fans will enjoy it, as will any wannabe rock star. While it doesn't do anything new in the genre, it's a well-made game and one that you will have to spend some time with if you want to see the true ending. This one did get a PC release in 2017, but its only console release was on Xbox 360. Storm This is a rather clever nature-based puzzle game based on the seasons of the year. You have the power to summon various weather elements like wind and rain, and the aim is for you to guide seeds on each stage to areas where they can be planted and become trees. While the game starts as a chilled experience, the later puzzles do get far harder and much more challenging. Some of the logic to a few of them can also be a bit baffling. Still, it's a clever and well-made game, and there isn't really much else like it on the system. The game has some solid 2D presentation and graphics and some enjoyable music, making it an indie puzzle game worth looking at. Storm also got a PC and PlayStation 3 release. Wrecked Revenge Revisited This one is a follow-up to the excellent top-down racing game and combat car game known as Mashed. While I don't think the game is quite as good as Mashed due to the lack of single-player content, namely a proper racing championship over all the courses against the AI, all you get instead is a challenge mode with six different game types for each of the six stages by default. Two extra stages are part of the DLC and I can't help but feel the DLC is little more than the game being cut up to make it. 
Wrecked Revenge Revisited is still a lot of fun despite the flaws, long as you have a few friends to play with. As with Mashed, it supports up to four players offline and online with a selection of modes to play. From having to outrace your rival to one mode where you all have a bomb strapped to your cars and can't crash. There's plenty of weapons which you can use to damage and destroy your opponent's cars or you can just try and run them off the road. With Supersonic Software, the developer largely doing mobile games these days, it seems unlikely this will be reissued and the only other release of this one is on PlayStation 3. Cloudberry Kingdom The only reason I'm largely including Cloudberry Kingdom is because it recently got a discount and has already been delisted on Wii U and PC. Plus, the developer has been radio silent since around 2015. It's one until recently I stayed away from picking up, as it's got a bit of a reputation. You see, this platformer uses AI-generated levels, with some nice 2D graphics visuals. These levels start off very easy, but end up turning into something that makes me wonder if the developers are into women who dress in tight leather, carry whips and say things like, Are you ready for the pain? As this is a game built for masochists who enjoy brutally, brutally hard levels that bring tears to the eyes of all gamers. Forget FromSoft Soul series and Elden Ring, they are for wimps. This is the type of game, if you put it on for a friend to play, will see them scream their heads off at the horror that will unfold in front of them. Don't believe me, we'll take a look at videos of the last level or two at the end of the main mode. The AI has created levels that most mere mortals have little chance of beating. One look at the website True Achievements shows you how few people have beaten it fully. As an old school platform gamer myself, the early levels didn't give me any issue, but looking at what's to come, well, yeah, even I don't feel like doing every level in the game. That said, I am impressed with the excellent music and the hugely well done animated intros with the comic tone that look like stop motion puppets. Featuring the voice of Kevin Sorbo, best remembered for the 90s Hercules, The Legend Journey TV series and sci-fi series Andromeda. There's some interesting elements to this game, but beware the difficulty will have you cursing the developer all night long if you decide to brave this platformer. Seriously, Bob? You call this a rescue? Who said I was here for you, princess? Um, every medieval fairy tale ever written? Double Dragon 2, Wonder of the Dragons. Now, most of these games are on this list for being good or great title. This one's here purely because it's an Xbox 360 exclusive and will be delisted come the end of July. It's a rather poor 3D HD remake of the original arcade game Double Dragon 2 The Revenge, and now that Arc System Works own the IP rights, this version of the game is getting buried well and truly, most likely in an unmarked grave. So unless like me you are a die-hard scrolling beat-em-up fan, this is one to skip over unless you want to see how bad it is. This may even fall under the So Bad It's Good category. The game also had somewhat of a suspect release. It first appeared on XBLA PartnerNet in 2011, however wasn't officially released until 2013. No one's quite sure why, but some people think the poor quality might have been a reason for the delay. It's a very below average game and the walking controls are a bit broken it seems when I was recording this video. It's not totally broken and this game does let you play as Marion and another character called Jeff. Also features a survival mode and verse mode on top of the story mode. This game makes Double Dragon Neon from Way Forward look like a masterpiece in comparison and that was only above average I felt when compared to the original game and the SNES and GBA installments. This is one for collectors and diehard fans of the series only as you won't be enjoying your time playing it. Atari Classic Games Range Atari and developer Stainless Games, best known for the Carmageddon series of titles, adapted a number of the classic Atari arcade titles to Xbox 360 in the early days of XBLA. These versions included the original arcade game and an updated Evolved Edition. They are a bit of a mixed bag to say the least. Some are decent, but others are awful. However, these HD versions are only on Xbox 360. There was a collection released on PlayStation Portable by Stainless Games that featured all these games and a few more, but the graphics were cut down heavily. On Xbox 360, they are all single releases and the following games got released on it. Centipede and Millipede, Missile Commander, 
Asteroids and Deluxe, Tempest, Battlezone and finally Warlords. Of them all, Battlezone is by far the best of them, with one of the best updated games. Tempest is a great arcade game but the game runs too fast, making it insanely hard. The Evolved mode is so hard in Tempest that only a handful of people have ever beaten it. Warlords has the back art for the original arcade game missing and an unattainable achievement, but the Evolved version is quite good. Centipede and Millipede are alright, but I was never a big fan of either game to be honest, but the Evolved version seemed decent enough. Asteroid and Deluxe is another that still holds up well, and the Evolved version stays true to the original game. Missile Commander is a classic, but the Evolved version is just terrible, very much a mixed bag. Still, with all of them priced at between £2 to £3, pounds, you can't complain that much. One for Atari fans mainly. Alien Breed Evolution Episode 1, Assault Episode 2 and Descent Episode 3. Now here is an interesting one, Team 17 did a new follow up to their classic Alien Breed series. The first appeared on the Amiga. In Europe we got a retail collection of all three games, however you guys in the USA didn't get that collection. They are in fact all the same game, just split into episodic content telling the story of Conrad fighting to stop the alien menace taking over his ship the Leopold. The game features both a single player and co-op campaign that tell different parts of the story. Gameplay is the same as the original games and they are best summed up as a twin stick shooter. Not the best example in the genre, but decent enough. Interestingly, the PC and PlayStation 3 version of the first episode had a number of changes made to it to improve the game and so the name was adjusted to Alien Breed Impact for that version. Fans of the original may find themselves a little disappointed with this new game. What's annoying is both the original Alien Breed and Alien Breed Special Edition got a 2D HD remaster on PlayStation 3, but that remake didn't get ported to Xbox 360. Same with the now delisted Super Frog remaster which sadly got caught in a legal spat. The original version of Episode 1 is exclusive to Xbox 360, it isn't really a selling point mind, as the revised version featured the upgraded shop seen in the later episodes and other improvements and the Impact version is the better release. As to why these aren't on Xbox One, well you'll have to ask Team 17 that question. The Worms series. Now there are four Worms games released on Xbox 360, they are Worms, Worms 2 Armageddon, Worms Revolution and Worms Ultimate Mayhem. Now they are roughly in the same boat as the Alien Breed games. They do all have PC and PlayStation 3 releases, but none got added to the back catalogue for some odd reason. There are however newer Worms games on Xbox One and series. All four games are available across two retail collections here in Europe, however the bad news is like Alien Breed neither got a USA release, and these collections don't include the download content for the first 360 Worms game or Worms Ultimate Mayhem. The Worms Revolution retail disc is also now the only way to obtain the download content for the title, as Worms Revolution and its DLC did get delisted for a while on 360. Only the core game returned to the store, the DLC was never put back up. So even if you have both retail discs like us, you won't have all the Worms content on disc and the first Worms Xbox 360 game is very bare bones without the DLC and some of it is actually free to download from the Xbox 360 store. All the Worms Ultimate Mayhem packs however are all paid for. The naming of the games is also somewhat confusing. 360 Worms is a whole new game despite it using the same name as the original Amiga title, while Worms 2 Armageddon is a follow up to the Xbox 360 game and has no relation to the fan favourite Worms Armageddon released in 1999. To avoid confusion on PC it was renamed Worms Reloaded and featured even more content from the Xbox 360 version, some of it looked like it was taken from the first Worms 360 game. Both games stay true to the 2D roots of the original game and the classic gameplay format. The PlayStation 3 version of the first game had no DLC and all the content was bundled together as it was a later release. Worms Ultimate Mayhem is a really impressive package as the game is in fact Worms 3D and Worms 4 Mayhem merged together in one release with extra content, which is great value for the money. 
just be sure to grab the DLC as well and as a heads up one of the achievements is broken in it. While Worms Revolution is a 2.5D take on the series with 3D visuals in the classic 2D format, I did feel it lost a little charm compared to the 2D games however. Fez and Dust and Elysian Tale These games fall into an odd category. Both games are available on many modern systems which include both PlayStation 4 and 5 along with Nintendo Switch. However, neither game is available on newer Xbox systems. Back catalogue support just isn't here. My guess would be that either both developers planned to release a newer version and never got around to it, or both were soured with their experience working with Microsoft and just didn't want to do it again. Based on the history of both games, the latter would not surprise me at all, and now that we know Microsoft are throwing in the Xbox console towel, there is little reason to do so. Both games are open world platformers, or as some would call them Metroidvanias, a term I don't actually like as a number of games with similar gameplay predates these games like Jet Set Willy on the ZX Spectrum. Fez is a game that was a clever mix of 2D and 3D from developer and publisher Polygon Corporation, which had you finding cubes hidden across a beautiful 2D world that following an accident had been converted to 3D in order to save it. Smart puzzles and superb visuals make this a very well made game, it's just a shame there were a couple of bugs with it on release that caused your save file to corrupt or get stuck. While a patch was released that addressed these issues, it added in a bug where you couldn't then save in the larger waterfall area or that would then also corrupt your save and the game on 360 didn't get any further updates after that. Despite the issues, in the first release it was a hugely impressive game and the fact you had to figure out what the language was in the game was pure genius and made this a game where you really did have to think about what you were doing. Hopefully one day maybe we'll see a sequel, until then I highly recommend grabbing this one even with the bugs, but the Switch, PC and PlayStation versions are your best bet unless you don't own those consoles. Dust on the other hand mixes together open world platform gameplay with hack and slash combat then bakes it into an action RPG mode. Great gameplay, music, intro and voice acting and 2D graphics put this into a class well above many XBLA games on the system. I can highly recommend this one having finished it some years back. There's a great cast of characters and a well done plot twist later in the game. The animation is also first class and the combat is hugely satisfying. I just wish all indie games looked and played this good. Calderus and Shooting Love 2000X as discussed in our previous videos, both these arcade shooters or shmup games to fans of the genre got retail releases in Japan but only digital releases in the rest of the world, so if you want a complete Xbox 360 shmup collection in PAL or NTSC U, you'll need to grab these two digitally. Calderus is a rather colourful bullet hell shooter that's actually rather enjoyable, even if the game has a rather silly art mechanic where the player character's clothes rip as you take damage, you can turn it off mind as I did for this recording. Plenty to shoot and some fairly impressive full screen bosses make this one of the more fun games in the genre I've played in recent years. Shooting Love 2000X is a collection of a couple of games, two of which are Triangular Service's earlier arcade shooters Trizeal and Xzeal. While the graphics are rather poor, the gameplay is very good and the shooters have multiple routes and other cool features to find. It also features a huge skill test minigame broken into lots of parts to test how you play shooters. It's fun and rather silly, but there is a truckload of different games within it to practice on and get good at blowing stuff up or dodging enemy fire. Triangular Service did a couple of titles in the Shooting Love series, but this is the only one to be released over here. And finally we come to the wrap up. Phew. Right, that is where I will leave it dear viewers. There are still plenty of other great XBLA 360 games that I haven't mentioned in this video like Star Raiders, Xenoclash 2, Xenoclash Ultimate Edition, The Path of Go, Space Channel 5 Part 2, Sanctum 2, Race Storm HD and many more. That's just talking about games not available to buy on Xbox One and Series X, let alone all the DLC content also up to buy. If I get time I will quickly cover a few more games of those while the store is still up and try to do something on the DLC for games if I can. If we didn't include a game or DLC in the rundown you would like covered, drop a comment below to let other viewers know about it. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it please do hit 
that like button. Think about subscribing and you can hit the bell if you want. Follow us on Twitter, Twitch, and you can support us on Ko-fi if you wish. Links in the video description and pin comment. Until we meet again, I wish you all a good morning, afternoon, evening or night, wherever you are in the world today.